In this video, I'll show you how to create this beautiful halftone effect in Affinity Photo. Let's get started. If you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a download link for this photo in the video description. I chose this photo because it has a strong contrast between the dark shadows and the bright highlights. This is important so that the effect can show up nicely. For the first step, we're going to make this image black and white, and I'll do that with the HSL adjustment. I'm going to bring the saturation slider all the way down, and then we can close out of this. Next, I'm going to add a levels adjustment. We won't use this quite yet, but later on we'll use this to adjust the contrast. Okay, with that setup done, now we can start the halftone effect. So first, we're going to add a new pixel layer. Then I'm going to grab the Fill Bucket tool. And I'm going to change our color so that it's 50% gray. And you can see this right over here. We have 0, 0, 50. Once you have that, you can click right in our document to fill this layer with gray. All right, now I'm going to go to our filters and I'll apply the halftone filter. For these settings, make sure you have your settings set to monochrome, cosine, and then we're going to decrease the cell size to around 20. And we'll do the same for the contrast. This is just a good starting point for most pictures, but we can go ahead and adjust this later as needed. I'll close out of this. And then to blend this into our photo, I'm going to select our pixel layer, so this whole layer, and I'm going to change this to hard mix. Now that we can see our photo again, we can go ahead and make some adjustments to the contrast and the dot size. So to do that, I'll just click right here to open the halftone filter again. And now we can go ahead and adjust these. So the bigger the cell size, the bigger the dots will be, and you can zoom in to see this better. And then you can raise this to decrease the contrast. It's a little backwards that way. Okay, I think that looks like a pretty good start. To fine tune the contrast a little more, I'll click right here to open our levels adjustment. And then I can use these sliders to adjust things. So the black level and white level sliders will make the contrast more intense. So you can see our shadows get darker and our highlights get brighter. If you want to do the opposite and make the black levels lighter, so in this case, if I raise this, you can see her hair gets lighter. You can use the output sliders for that. And the output white level will make the highlights darker. The output white level slider is actually pretty important for this because in a lot of pictures, you'll have blown out highlights. In this case, it's not too bad, but sometimes there will be no dots on your subject's face. So by lowering this slider, you'll be able to fix that. And last, we have the gamma slider, which will make the photo overall brighter or darker. Okay, I like how everything's looking. I don't think I'll adjust things too much here. I just wanted to show you that this is an option to use. And now I have one last bonus tip for you. You can add some shape to these dots to flow around the curves of her face. And to do that, I'm going to select the pixel layer. Then I'll go to our filters and I'll apply the liquify filter. This jumps us into the liquify persona. And from here, I'm going to select the twirl tool. I'll make my brush nice and big by using the bracket keys on my keyboard, or you can use this size slider. And now all I need to do is click and hold on her face and you can see that the dots twist. So we've twisted those dots there to curve around her cheek. We can do that for her forehead a little bit too, so they flow differently. And if you use an even larger brush, you can see it affects the whole face at the same time. 
I like how that looks, I don't want to overdo it, so I'll just press done. If you ever want to go back and make adjustments, you can always click on the liquify filter again to make those adjustments. All right, so you can see now we have this beautiful halftone effect. I'm just going to select all of our layers so that you can see the complete before and after. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.